Chapter 6 Roy pulled into the churchyard and helped Henri down from the wagon. Walking into the church together made him feel like he was doing something great. Pastor Scott was ready for them, and Hannah was sitting off to the side of the room, her focus on something else entirely. At least that's how it looked to Henri. At the front of the church, the two of them stood in front of the pastor. Are you sure you don't want to wait for family? Jed asked. Henri shook her head. No, I already feel like I shouldn't marry without my mother. If his mother came, I'd feel like I was doing something terribly wrong. I can understand that. Jed said a prayer, and then he started the ceremony. Do you Roy take Henrietta to be your lawfully wedded wife? To love, honor, and cherish for as long as you both shall live? I do, Roy said, his voice eager. Do you Henrietta, take Roy to be your lawfully wedded husband? To love, honor, and obey him for as long as you both shall live. I do, Henri said, her voice much shakier than Roy's had been. When Pastor Jed told Roy he could kiss the bride, Roy grabbed her waist and pulled her to him, kissing her. All he could think about was that evening, he wouldn't need to stop after one or two kisses. No, he was greatly looking forward to making babies with this girl, his wife. Roy thanked the pastor and Hannah hurried over to offer her best wishes to Henri. It seems like this happened very quickly. How long did you and the pastor court? Henri asked. Hannah laughed. A day or two. And you say that Roy and I went quickly? That's just plain silly. She and Roy had courted for three whole weeks before getting married. It definitely would have been too fast if they'd still been in the East, but the West was something different entirely. Indiana seemed like it was barely a memory at this point. It is. I'm sorry about that. Hannah hugged Henri tightly. Always be true, and no one can ask any more from a wife than that. I'll come to you if I have trouble or questions about being a wife, Henri said. I just wish my mother could have been here today. I know her death is still very fresh to you. Perhaps you could think about how happy this marriage would have made her. Henri thought about that and smiled. Her mother had known how she felt about Roy long before, and she had approved of the match. Thank you. I will. On the drive up to his cabin from the church, he couldn't quit grinning. My cabin is small, but it should be big enough for two, or even three if a third should happen to come along. I hope we have a baby right off, Henri said, imagining each tiny finger and toe. I hope so too. He wanted children, but he could wait for a year or two with no problem. He liked the idea of spending time alone with his wife, before the baby started to come. Do you have any food in the cabin? she asked. I'll need to cook our noon meal. Of course. I have everything my ma told me I'd need. I'll show you when we get there. He wished he'd had time to make a beautiful kitchen for her, but this winter was just about survival. They would be thankful for the roof over their heads. Roy pulled up in front of their small cabin. I waited until you were here before spending a night. I slept on the floor at my parents' house. She smiled. That's sweet. You should have slept where you were more comfortable though. He helped her down from the wagon and took her pillowcase from the back, slinging it over one shoulder. He opened the door for her and watched as she looked around. I'll show you where the food is. Do you want me to start a fire while you look at what we have? That would be wonderful. I love that I'm going to have my own kitchen to cook in. He grinned. I do too. I know you're going to make so much food here, and it will all be delicious. I do hope so. He led her to a small area off to the side of the kitchen. All the food is right there. He gestured to the area. You should be able to find food to cook for a while. Can I talk you into a bit of hunting? She asked. We're going to want to have a stockpile of meat while we can get it. He nodded. I didn't like venison until you cooked it for me. Now I feel like I would like you to cook it for every meal. 
That's sweet, she said, smiling up at him. When he drew her to him for a kiss, she was a bit startled, but she gladly kissed him back. Should we kiss during the day? Is that okay? We're going to kiss a lot more than you think. I want you to always know that I'll be by your side. All right. You go do whatever you have planned for the day, and I'll get our lunch ready. Looking at what there was to offer, she immediately started devising a meal. She only wished he had fresh meat for her to cook with. I was just going to chop some wood before lunch, and then I'll do some hunting this afternoon. I would love to have some fresh meat for you. I'd prefer elk or venison to bear, but if you get a bear, make sure to get my father and brothers, and they'll help you with it for a portion of the meat. I will. I'd prefer elk or deer or moose myself. She smiled. I'm really not a fan of bear meat, but it would last us for a good long while, and we would at least be able to eat through the winter. I'm going to be hunting as much as I can through the winter. Pa's and my herds are small enough that we'll put them all in together, and then Pa will take care of them through the winter. I'll hunt for both families. Do you mind that I'm still working so closely with my father? He asked. I'm still doing my family's laundry and making them bread. How could you working with your father bother me? She shook her head, a smile lighting up her face. I'm going to make one of my favorite meals from the trail. We'll have jerky with a gravy over rice or mashed potatoes. Do you have a preference? He wrinkled his nose. Rice is always so hard to eat. And it crunches when you eat it. She frowned. I'm going to make rice. We'll see if you like it better. It's filling and not very expensive. Are you going to be a frugal wife? He loved the idea of that because they wouldn't hurt for money as often. Absolutely. It's my job to be frugal, isn't it? Roy walked to her and kissed her. It is. I'm glad I married you. Henri wrapped her arms around him in a hug. I feel the same way. Okay. You go get wood chopped, and I'll get our lunch finished. He headed for the door. I'll be chopping some every day. We need to have enough for the winter. We do. She couldn't imagine what winter would be like without a great deal of firewood. Their meal was ready in about an hour, and she went to the door to call him for the meal. Roy, lunch is ready. Roy made one last chop and left the axe in the wood. I'm coming. Wash your hands, she reminded him. There wasn't a great deal of water for cooking, but they would have to make do. Of course, she could get more water from the creek and boil it, but it was a long way, and she wasn't sure she was strong enough to carry pails full of water that far. He came in and used a tiny bit of the water, while she put lunch on the table. He looked at the rice and frowned. I really don't think I'm going to like it this way. I'm just as certain you will, she replied. Do you want coffee? He nodded. I never used to like it, but I got used to it on the trail. Me too. The doctor had insisted that any water used for cooking had to be boiled first and they could only drink coffee and tea. She now drank both, but she'd left Indiana drinking neither one. They sat down together for their first meal as man and wife, and he took her hand in his before praying. He thanked God for the food and for her agreeing to marry him. Everything seemed so perfect to Henri that a single tear traveled down her cheek. Not only were they in their new home, but they had a roof over their heads, and soon they would have meat for winter. She couldn't ask for more. Roy took one bite of the rice with the gravy on it, something his mother had made often on the trail, and smiled. Your rice is so different from my ma's. I was hoping you'd like rice when you realized how it's really supposed to taste. She sipped at her coffee. My ma really can't cook, can she? I don't want to say anything that would make you think less of your mother. Let's just say that I cook very differently than she does. This is delicious. I could eat this every day. She chuckled. That's good because we may need to. You have a huge amount of rice there, 
and I think I want to save most of the potatoes for seed. If I can get you to enjoy rice, it will stretch our food stores a great deal more. I'm all for that. Potatoes seem to have been the major crop cultivated by the Indians here. Yes, I plan to grow them in my kitchen garden, but I can't do that until spring. Until then, we need to eat what we have. She shook her head. It's going to be a long hard winter. The more you hunt leading up to the winter, the better off we'll be. I agree. All right. I'm happy to eat rice if Ma doesn't make it, and I'll look forward to more potatoes next summer. She smiled. I'll choose the ones I want for planting, and we'll still have some for the winter. Just not nearly as many as we'd probably like to have. I understand. He was happy she was forward-thinking about so many things. She really was going to be a good wife to him. They'd gotten married so quickly, he was a bit worried about how well she'd do at the important tasks of being a wife. The worry left his mind there. As soon as he was finished eating, he headed out with his rifle to get some game. As much as she preferred other meats, she prayed for a bear. It would keep their family going all winter. While Roy was gone, Henri did the dishes and cleaned up the table after their small meal. She looked through what they had left for supper and decided to see if he brought in some game before deciding for certain what to cook. She needed to use fresh meat all she could. Not only did it taste better, but the jerky would be good for later months when there was no fresh meat to be had. She spent the afternoon sweeping the floors and doing other small tasks to keep their little cabin clean. It was all one room, and there was a bed on the other side of the cabin from her kitchen. The cabin would be extremely intimate as they got used to one another as newlyweds. There was no chest to store their clothing in, so she would have to get creative there. She didn't know how skilled Roy was at working with wood, but if he could build either a trunk or a chest for them, it would make her task of keeping their clothes clean much easier. The floor in the cabin was of course dirt, and while it wasn't her favorite thing to take care of, she knew it would get better. For now, she was just happy to have a roof over her head. Roy returned after three hours. I got an elk. Henri grinned. That's wonderful. Elks make the best jerky. Do you need someone to help you hang it? She knew most animals needed to be bled out before they could be used. He shook his head. Pa helped me. I promised we'd have them over to supper on Saturday night for the help. And I'll also give them a portion of the meat. Of course. I know we'll be sharing meat for a while. She looked out the window and smiled when she saw the sheer size of the elk hanging from a tree twenty yards from her door. Can you get me a roast from it for supper tonight? After it's drained a little of course. I'd be happy to. That sounds really good. With potatoes, carrots, and some of your amazing gravy. That's what I'll make then. I'm thankful you like my cooking because it will make things so much easier. Oh, I agree with that. I think I can get a roast for you in about an hour. Does that give you enough time to cook it? He asked. It does. Maybe you should go out and try to find one more. You know you have an hour. Roy nodded but frowned at the same time. He'd planned to spend their wedding day together, not out hunting. He understood they needed as much food stored as possible, but couldn't that wait until tomorrow? I'm on my way. After he was gone, Henri went through the potatoes and chose the ones she thought would be the best to plant in the spring. She put the ones she wanted to grow into a burlap sack and put it aside. The next time they went to his parents' cabin, she'd be sure to ask if she could keep it in their cellar. She took a few smaller potatoes and peeled and cut them up for their supper, putting them into a huge pot and pouring water over them. Then she peeled some carrots and chopped them, dropping them into the water with the potatoes. An onion was chopped and added to give the whole dish a better flavor. Now she just had to wait for an elk roast, and she could put it all on for supper. Maybe she could get Roy to go out and get even more game while it cooked. She realized then she hadn't started the bread for the day. 
How could she forget bread? Quickly she mixed up ten loaves, as she always had. She didn't think she and Roy would need more than two or three loaves, but she'd take the rest to her father. She'd walk up the hill in the morning. There was a knock on the door as she was waiting for the bread to rise. Opening it, she saw Sam and Bastion. What are you two doing here? she asked smiling at her brothers. We made you a wedding present. We started on it as soon as we realized that you and Roy were courting. Bastion had his usual grin on his face, and she thought about how lucky some girl would be to marry him. Bastion was never in a bad mood, and she was sure that would make marriage much easier. Henri clapped her hands together. Her brothers were skilled with their hands, and she was sure what they'd brought would be wonderful. Her brothers stepped out of the way to show her a trunk. It wasn't huge, but it would easily store all their clothes. Oh, thank you. I was just thinking I should ask Roy to make me something for our clothes. She hugged both of her brothers in turn. We thought this would help. Jared didn't help us with it because he was busy making one of his own. He's courting Emma, you know, Bastion said. Bastion was always the one speaking when it was him and Sam. Sam was quieter than their brothers, but he had a wonderful sense of humor when he wanted to use it. I hadn't heard officially, but I think it's good. Emma is sweet as can be. Henri was truly happy the two of them were dating. It would be nice to have an excuse to spend more time with her new sister-in-law. I made ten loaves of bread this morning and left them with Pa. I'm making a bunch more tonight, but I'll come up tomorrow to drop them off. I may even make supper for all of you, but don't count on it. It depends on how busy I'll be. Bastion nodded. We understand. We already miss your cooking, but we know you need to cook for your husband now. I do, Henri said, looking off in the distance. Roy seems to be struggling with the game he is bringing in. Would you two make yourselves useful? Her brothers hurried off to help Roy. She couldn't tell what kind of animal it was, but she was certain it wasn't a bear. If he could keep bringing in two large animals per day, she was going to be able to dry, or salt, a great deal of meat for winter. The three men together made short work of the second elk. At least it looked like an elk and it was almost as big as the one Roy had shot earlier. She wanted to jump up and down and clap her hands, but she was a married woman now, and she therefore needed to be more sedate in the things she did. Instead, she walked outside to see the men hanging the elk. You're going to get some incredible meals out of this, Bastion said. Roy smiled. I can already taste them. Chapter 7 Roy brought her the roast she'd asked for and then carried in the chest her brothers had made for her, setting it at the foot of the bed. I was planning on making one, but I'm glad I don't have to. It's a very nice wedding gift. Henri smiled. I think so too. My brothers tend to spoil me every chance they get. He could see how very close she was to her family, and he was just as close to his. He hoped there would never be a time they had to choose between parents, because it would be hard. I'm going to go cut a roast for Ma to make for supper as well, but hers will have to be much bigger. That's fine. I hope they enjoy it. I think I'm going to go out and see if I can get one more. Henri nodded. I think that's very wise. I know it seems like I'm crazy, but I want us to be ready for winter. No, I understand. I've spent so long thinking that I just needed to have shelter for winter, but you're right. We need food. He took his rifle and went out for what she was certain would be the last time that day. They were fortunate enough that they lived in a valley where the game was plentiful. If Roy was willing to hunt for another few weeks and could keep bringing in as much meat as he was, they would be set for winter, and his parents would as well and quite possibly her family, but she wasn't as worried about them. Bastion was an excellent hunter, as was Sam. It would all work out. She put the roast into the water with the vegetables and hung the pot in the fireplace. Then she went out and cut a much larger roast and put it on a platter, 
carrying it to his parents' house. Emma came to the door at her knock, and she eyed the bloody piece of meat. That looks disgusting, she said. It does. But it will make a wonderful supper. Mrs. Williams walked over and smiled at Henri. I heard you were getting married today. And you're bringing me a present? I don't think it's supposed to work that way. Henri laughed. Roy has already gotten too large elk today. I'm making elk roast for supper and thought you might enjoy the fresh meat as well. You'll be getting more of course, but the blood is still draining. Mrs. Williams took the platter with the meat on it and took it into her kitchen, dumping it in a huge pot and hanging it over the fireplace. Henri was surprised, she never once touched the meat. How odd. Henri bit her lip, but she couldn't keep herself from asking, aren't you going to put water in with it? It'll dry out terribly without. Mrs. Williams shook her head. No, this is how I've always cooked meat. Henri was glad she wasn't eating with his family that night. His mother really was a terrible cook. She didn't even seem to know the basics. Well, I should get back to our cabin. I'm baking bread to go with our elk roast tonight. Wonderful. Mrs. Williams smiled. Have a wonderful supper. And best wishes. Henri smiled. She'd worked so hard all day that she'd almost forgotten it was her wedding day. Thank you. As she walked back toward the cabin, she wondered if she should offer to give Mrs. Williams cooking lessons. Even though the woman was a great deal older than she was, she didn't seem to have a clue how to make a good meal. She hurried back into the cabin and put an iron skillet onto the fire with the first loaf of bread in it. All the bread should be done for the day, and she wanted to kick herself for not thinking of baking it earlier. The wedding had just flung all reason from her mind. When Roy came home an hour later, he was empty-handed. I didn't see anything else. That's fine. We probably have 500 pounds of meat out there. I know it's not enough for your family and us, but I don't think it will be much longer before we feel like we're completely ready for the winter. She took the skillet out of the fire and dumped the bread out onto a towel on the table. Then she added the next loaf of bread to the fire. It should be done around the time supper was. Do you want to take this loaf of bread to your ma? I didn't smell any bread baking when I took them a roast earlier. I think that's a great idea. How should I carry it? She took a clean towel and wrapped the bread in it, showing him just where to hold it to keep it clean and not burn his hand. That should work. He kissed her quickly. Do you have more work to do after supper? He was certainly hoping he wouldn't have to wait until late for his wedding night. Just the dishes. Tomorrow we'll be busy with the meat, though. I think you'll have to butcher all day, and I'll dry some for the winter. Henri laughed, shaking her head. I feel like our entire lives are consumed with getting ready for the winter. I do too, he said. But, if we don't want to starve this winter, or freeze to death, we need to keep working. I was a little disappointed earlier that you wanted me to hunt all day and not spend time with you, but I realize now that you're right. We need to keep on our toes and keep doing as much as we can to make it through. She grinned at him. We'll have plenty of time to spend together this winter, when it's too cold to go out. Thanks for working toward winter with me. I'm really excited about all the game you got today. We're going to be set for winter with a few more elk. But we must clean these first. I'll be right back, he said, picking up the loaf of bread for his family. His ma never baked bread. He didn't think she liked it but he knew the rest of the family would be pleased with the offering. While Roy was gone, Henri set the table and served them each a plate, cutting up the bread and putting out a ball of butter. She would soon have to start churning butter again. That was one thing that had been so much easier on the trail. They'd just hung the cream under the wagons in the morning, and by noon, they had butter. Now she'd have to work for butter again. She hoped she could talk Roy into building her a butter churn. When Roy came back, he had a big grin on his face. 
I thought my pa was going to kiss me when I walked into their cabin with bread. Ma said she'd made it early in their marriage, but she always burned it, and pa had asked her to stop making it. Do you think your ma would like me to teach her how to cook? she asked. I'd be happy to do it. Probably not a good idea, Roy said. She's always been self-conscious about her cooking. I don't think I realized just how bad it was until recently. It was all I'd ever had. I understand. If you ever think she'd be open to it, I'd happily teach her a few things. She put the roast on the fire with no water. It's going to be hard and will be lacking flavor. I suggested water, and she told me she always made roast that way. He washed his hands and sat down at the table, looking at his plate. Is this how a roast is supposed to look? he asked. He'd never seen one look so moist. That's how my ma always made them. After their prayer, he took a small bite of the roast dipping it in the gravy on his mashed potatoes. He chewed slowly, finally giving her the verdict. This is amazing. She smiled. I love to cook. We have enough for our noon meal tomorrow. I'd gladly eat this repeatedly. He forked up another bite and swallowed it quickly. That's what you said about lunch. I think I'm just going to say that I will happily eat anything you make. She reached for the bread and buttered two pieces, handing him one. Do you think you could make me a butter churn? This is my last ball of butter, and I can't make it by hanging a pail under the wagon anymore. He nodded, slowly. Do you cook with a lot of butter? he asked. Yes, of course. And I always want it for my bread. He took a bite and sighed. This is heavenly. I love baking bread. I almost forgot to bake today, and I'm sorry for that. I'll be putting bread into the oven throughout the evening. I plan to take several loaves of bread to my pa and brothers every couple of days. They're used to having fresh bread with every meal. And will you make their butter? he asked. I will. Any way I can keep them fed will make me happy. All your brothers need to marry, so their wives can help you with the cooking. I really don't mind. My ma taught me there was joy in caring for others. He smiled. I think that sounds lovely. You are welcome to do whatever you want. Good. I really worried for a little while that you would feel neglected if I did things for my family. Not at all. I want you to do things that will keep them happy. Why wouldn't I? They're my family now too. Henri smiled. I thought you might be jealous of the time that I spend doing for them and not doing for you. He chuckled. Not at all. In the dead of winter, I may ask them to come to us for the bread, so you didn't have to carry it up the hill in the cold, but other than that, it's just fine. She got up and removed the skillet from the fire, dropping the bread on a cloth, and adding the next loaf. How long will it take you to finish baking tonight? he asked. He was already wishing he could drag her off to bed. Oh, no more than two hours. Usually, I bake in the mornings and have the bread ready in the afternoon. I just didn't think to start my baking today. Our morning was quite busy, he said grinning at her as he took her hand in his. That, and I'd baked bread when I got up this morning for my pa and brothers. How was I supposed to remember to bake twice? Do you bake fresh bread every day? he asked. Most days I do. I make extra on Saturdays, so I don't have to do any baking on Sundays. I do cook on Sundays though. I hate that I must break the Sabbath to keep my family from being hungry. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that, he said. God knows that we all need to eat every day, which includes Sundays. She ate her last bite and watched as he ate every drop of food on his plate and then mopped up the last of the gravy with bread. Do you want more? she asked. There's plenty. He shook his head. No, that's fine. I'm full, and I'll be looking forward to eating this again tomorrow. What all do you have planned for tomorrow? she asked. 
splitting more wood and dealing with the elks. We need to split up meat between my family and us. Maybe take some to your family if you want. If you'll get me another large roast in the morning, I'll make it for my family, and we'll take them a few roasts. They're all good hunters, but they're not so great at cooking. Few men are, he said. After she'd finished the bread and washed all the dishes, she sat down at the table with him. The only furniture in the house was the bed, table, and benches, so she really didn't have a lot of options. She wanted a bath badly, but she'd have to bring water in and boil it to make it happen, and they didn't have enough water to do it. He had a rain barrel out to collect water, though. It was funny how much they now relied on rainwater. I think I'm done for the night, she said. Do you have chickens? He nodded. Well, my parents do, and they have plenty for all of us to have eggs every morning. Ma does well with her chickens. They were mostly in their cages the whole way here, but sometimes she'd let them out for the morning walk, and they actually followed her along the trail. I have no idea how she did that. That's fun. I do well with cows, but not so much with chickens. I'll have to get her to teach me her tricks. He smiled. Emma is just as good with chickens as Ma is. How's her cooking? she asked. About like Ma's. Henri knew Jared wouldn't be pleased with that, but she didn't want to interfere. Obviously, his family had lived just fine with his mother's cooking. She wasn't sure quite how, but they had. If you're finished with all your work for the night, perhaps we should get ready for bed. Roy had been waiting for their wedding night since the first moment he saw her in Independence. She nodded. Can you give me ten minutes to get ready? she asked. He frowned. What do you want me to do during that time? Oh, go milk a cow or split some more wood. It would be easier if I stayed inside and helped you undress. Her cheeks turned beet red. Please? Roy got up and went outside, but it was obvious to her he was reluctant to do so. She heard him using the axe, though, so she jumped up and undressed, putting on her nightgown. She was glad no one was outside, because she hadn't made curtains yet, and the window was open. She was pretty sure she had enough fabric to do so, and she'd start on them after the elk were readied for winter. In her nightgown, Henri climbed beneath the sheets on the bed. It was a strange feeling to know Roy would be in at any time to consummate her marriage. She wanted to tell him she wasn't ready, but she also wanted babies. She wasn't sure what she wanted more, to wait or to have babies. When Roy came in a few moments later, he turned down the lanterns throughout the small cabin. There were only four, but they made the cabin very bright because the room was so small. After the lights were out, Henri could hear him undressing. When he slid into bed beside her and pulled her toward him, she was surprised to discover he was wearing no clothes. Aren't you supposed to wear a nightshirt? she asked. He chuckled. There's nothing we're supposed to do. Except consummate our marriage. I'm very nervous about that. To tell the truth, I am too. I've never done this before either, but I'm nervous and eager both. I've been looking forward to this night since I first saw you in Independence. She closed her eyes for a moment. She'd been imagining his babies all that time, but she'd never once thought about how they'd make them together. Thankfully, her mother had explained to her how babies were made, and she was aware of what would happen. I want to make you happy, Henri finally said. He smiled. I want to make you happy as well. He pressed his lips to hers and kissed her more passionately than he had before. His hands roamed over her body on top of her nightgown. He caught her nipple, between one thumb and forefinger, and slowly teased it with his fingers. I don't think you're supposed to touch me there. Henri said. Her mother hadn't talked about men touching a woman's breast. It's fine. We're married. I can touch you all over. She nodded. He'd talked to someone other than her mother about this night. She decided that she wouldn't worry about what he was doing anymore, 
and she wrapped her arms around him and enjoyed his touch. When he finally moved to cover her and make them one, she was eager for him. A short while later, he lay on his back, gasping for breath, while she snuggled right into him. Sometime during their time of passion, he'd thrown her nightgown onto the floor. I should get my nightgown. No. I like to touch your skin. So, she decided she could sleep without her nightgown, though she'd never even considered doing so before. Even on their hottest days on the trail. She was growing sleepy and yawned widely. I think I need sleep. It's been a busy day. It has. He turned her chin up so he could kiss her once more, and then closed his own eyes. Tomorrow, we'll work hard. We'll work hard every day, she responded before closing her eyes. He smiled at how pretty she looked by the light of the moon shining in the window. He hoped she never got around to making curtains for that one window. He liked to be able to see her in the night. Chapter 8 Henri woke before dawn the next morning, as she always did. She climbed out of bed, dressed quickly, and put a log on the fire. She was surprised at how chilly it was. It got colder in Clover Creek more quickly than it had in Indiana. She wanted to make eggs for their breakfast, but they would have to wait until he was awake and ready to go get the eggs. She put the coffee pot on the stove and then found the fabric she'd brought for curtains. Henri and her ma had both chosen fabric for curtains for their new homes. It was the one indulgence her pa had agreed to. She sat quietly at the table with only one lantern on, and she stitched the curtains. When Roy finally woke as the sun was rising, he rubbed his eyes wearily. What are you doing? I'm making curtains for our window. At night, I feel like I'm being watched by everyone, even though, I know it's not true. All right. He was without shame as he stood and got into his work clothes. I'll go and get eggs. Six enough? She nodded. Do you prefer your eggs fried or scrambled? I've only ever had scrambled. Would you like scrambled this morning, or would you prefer I made them how I like them? You have yet to feed me something I don't love. Just make them how you like them. Henri smiled. I will then. She toasted six pieces of toast, buttering each as soon as it was done. Then she heated up her iron skillet, putting butter in the bottom of it. Usually, she would make bacon and fry the eggs in the grease, but she didn't want to go through their bacon stores before she knew how much meat they'd have for the winter. Roy came back into the house with six eggs in a basket. Ma said we could have six eggs every morning if we wanted to. That would be wonderful. Then on mornings, I don't make eggs, I'll be able to make a cake. Eggs make all the difference in the world when you're baking. And you'd frost the cake, he asked, his eyes wide. He'd had few cakes growing up, mostly when he visited others. Of course. She cracked each egg into the skillet before returning it to the fireplace. She dreamed of the day she'd have a stove to cook on. Flipping them when the eggs were mostly finished cooking, she saw him watching everything she did intensely. Do you want to learn to cook? Not right now. I'm just interested in how you do things so differently than my ma. She put four eggs on a plate for him, and two on a plate for her. Then she added the four slices of toast for him and two for herself. She put the plates on the table and got coffee for both of them. When she sat down, they prayed, and then he eyed the eggs. How do I eat them? he asked. She showed him how to break the yolk and dip the toast into the runny yolk. This doesn't taste anything like eggs, he said, trying her way. But it's good. It's just a different way of making them. I make scrambled too, but I tend to prefer these. If you want scrambled, I can make them another day. She could only imagine what the eggs his mother made had tasted like. I could eat them this way every day. I'll do some scrambled as well so you can compare. Maybe I'll make scrambled tomorrow. Or you could make a cake tomorrow. I'm good with either one. She smiled. 
Why don't I do pancakes for breakfast in the morning, and I'll make a cake for dessert as well. They both need eggs, but just four would be enough for all that. I almost feel guilty loving your cooking as much as I do. I feel like I'm being disloyal to Ma. I won't tell her if you don't. He grinned. That's easy to agree to. He finished eating and pushed his plate away. I'm going to go split wood for an hour or so, and then I'll start butchering the elk. The elk are going to take most of the day. Sounds good to me. I'll dry some and salt some. Should I do the same for your family's meat, or will your ma prefer to do theirs herself? She prides herself on her jerky, so I would let her do it. I haven't tasted your jerky. Your ma's really is good. That's what I used for our lunch yesterday. All right. He stood. I'm going to get that wood chopped. She did the breakfast dishes while he chopped wood. After making the bed and sweeping, she felt that she was ready for a day of preserving meat. She walked outside to find a huge stack of logs against the house, and Roy slicing up the meat. With as cold as it was at night, there was no danger of the meat having gone bad. How can I help? I need you to do the drying and salting. Nothing else. Henri nodded. Should I come out to get the meat, or will you bring it to me? I'll bring it in. Would you mind cutting off a big roast for my pa and brothers? Then I can take it to them when I take the bread. Oh, sure. He cut off a large hunk of meat. I'll carry it in. I know how women are about raw meat. Henri cocked her head to one side. And how are we? I've never met a woman who was willing to touch raw meat. How can we cook if we don't touch raw meat? His assumption made no sense to her. Of course, she'd seen his mother avoid touching meat just yesterday. You don't mind? She shook her head. My ma taught me that's the only way to cook, so I've been doing it since I was a little girl. She held her hands out, and he put the meat in them, watching her as if he expected her to drop it. Thank you. She carried the meat inside and made the same basic meal she and Roy had eaten the night before. Roast, onion, carrots, and potatoes. While that cooked, she started her bread for the day. It seemed to her she should be baking enough for his family, her family, and her own. She'd continue to bake ten loaves and split them between them. Each of their families could have four loaves per day, and she and Roy would keep two. Roy brought in several large hunks of meat. Are these for us or for your family? she asked. That's too much for us for even two meals. I think it would be a better amount for your family. All right, he said, putting the board he'd been balancing the meat on onto the table. I'll go tell Pa that he can come get it any time he wants to. All right. I could cut these in half to be the right size for us if you'd prefer. He nodded. Let's do that. I'd rather get ours done, and then have Ma come get hers. As soon as the roast for my family finishes cooking, I'll start a brine to preserve the meat. All right. Let me get back to chopping meat. As soon as the roast was done for her family, she pulled out her second cook pot, thankful that there were two for her to work with. In that pot, she put water and salt, putting it over the fire to bring to a boil. Then she picked up the other pot, as well as a kitchen towel with bread wrapped in it, and she walked outside, stopping to let Roy know she was going up the hill. Do you want me to carry that? he asked. It looks heavy. She smiled. It's not bad. I'll be back in thirty minutes or so. Heading up the hill, she ran into Jared, who had just come from the Williams cabin. I'm carrying this up to the cabin for your supper tonight. Emma offered to come up and cook for us. Biting her lip, Henri didn't say anything about the other woman's cooking ability. Maybe you should take this just in case, she said. He looked at her with narrowed eyes, but took the big pot from her. I have bread too. Lots and lots of bread. Good. I don't know if I could get through a day without eating your delicious bread, he said. 
I'm trying to be sure you don't have to. Until you marry that is. If she's a terrible cook, I'm sending her to you for cooking lessons. And I'll expect bread every day. Henri smiled sweetly. That sounds like it could be fun. She's already my sister-in-law, but soon she'll be my sister-in-law twice over. It'll be fun to teach her. You sound like you already know she's a terrible cook. I've never eaten her cooking, Henri said honestly. She hadn't eaten Mrs. Williams's cooking either, though she knew how terrible she was by comments Roy had made. Oh, then you have no idea. No they reached the cabin, and Henri went inside, getting a towel from the kitchen and wrapping the bread in it. She took out the big pot her pa had and she dumped the cooked roast, onion, potatoes, and carrots into it. There. Now you have backup or food for tomorrow. Whatever you need. Thanks, I think. If you want to cook for all of you, then just tell me. I won't bring any more food up. I know we're at least going to need bread every day, he said. She laughed, taking her pot back and tucking the cloth into the pocket of her apron. Goodbye, big brother. How do you like being married? He asked as she turned away. It's certainly different, but it's good. I think I'm going to be very happy with Roy. Good. Go home. She laughed. I'm trying to, but you keep talking to me. He chuckled but said nothing else, and she left. When she arrived at the cabin, she saw his father was there to help with the butchering, so she went straight inside. Henri took the boiling brine off the stove and immediately stuck one of the pans of bread into the fire. Then she cut the roasts in half. Then she took jars that were in the corner with the other supplies. She poured brine into each one and added one piece of meat to each before she screwed the lid onto the jar. There would be enough roasts to have one per week all winter, and that would feed them two meals each time. Perfect. He brought in some hunks of meat that were too small to be roasts, and she planned to dry them all. The jerky maid could then feed them with meals like the one she'd cooked for lunch the previous day. After sealing the brine with the meat, she took the bread off the stove, and then put the food that was left from their supper the night before on the fire and heated it up. As soon as she took it off the fireplace, she added another pan of bread. She would send two home with Mr. Williams if he wanted them. She set the table, and then called Roy for lunch. Mr. Williams was still there, so she offered him lunch as well. There was enough food for three of them. I'd love to, Mr. Williams said. She set another place at the table and poured coffee for the three of them. When the two men had washed their hands, they sat at the table, and Mr. Williams said their prayer, praising God for all he had brought their family through. Mr. Williams took his first bite of the roast and closed his eyes with pleasure. This is how my ma always made her roasts. It's delicious. Henri smiled. My ma taught me to make them this way. This isn't the same meat you gave us for supper last night, is it? Henri was afraid to answer. She didn't want him to think her cooking was better than his wife's. Yes, it's the same, Roy said, when he realized she wasn't going to answer Pa's question. Then why was our meat all dried out last night? Henri ducked her head. She knew the answer, but she didn't want to insult his wife. Henri, Mr. Williams said, do you know what my wife is doing wrong when she makes roast? She's not adding water, or vegetables. The vegetables season it and the water keeps the meat moist. Henri mumbled. When Mr. Williams took a second piece of her bread, he sighed happily. We are very grateful for the bread you made. We'd all been wanting bread for a long time, but I'm afraid my wife isn't much of a baker. I'm still making bread for my family as well, she said. I wouldn't mind bringing you some every day. If you gave me some flour to use, of course. We won't have enough for the winter if I kept making bread for three families. Of course. I'll bring you a 50-pound bag of flour after we finish eating. That would be fine. Henri was careful not to look at Roy. 
She knew he didn't think she should be talking about his mother's cooking, but what else could she do? Is there more? Mr. Williams asked, surprising her. Yes, there's enough for both of you to have another plate, Henri said. Would you like more as well, Roy? I would very much appreciate more, Roy said, but he didn't look at her. That's when she knew he was angry. But what could she do? She filled both plates and refilled their coffee. Then sat down and finished her own meal. I think I'm drying everything else. We have enough to have two meals from roasts all winter long. That should be enough, and I know you'll keep hunting game throughout the winter. Are you still fine with doing all the work with the cattle this winter, while I bring in game for all of us? Roy asked his father. Of course, Mr. Williams said. Just so all the work gets done, I think we can divide it any way we like. And we both know you're much better with a rifle than I am. Roy nodded. Then that will be the plan. Roy told me he invited your family to supper on Saturday night. What do you like to eat? Henri asked. Mr. Williams shrugged. I'd eat this every day all winter, honestly. But I'd be happy with whatever you enjoy cooking. All right. We'll figure it out then. She thought perhaps she could make some jerky gravy and rice for them, because it was a very inexpensive meal, but she'd talk to Roy about it later. He would have a better idea of what his family ate. She could also make some venison pies, but he'd have to get some venison. She wondered how her venison pie would taste with elk instead. She had a feeling it would be just as good. Perhaps she'd make that. Roy shook his head at her. Are you wool gathering? Henri smiled. I was thinking about different things I could cook when your family comes to supper. Make sure there's bread, Mr. Williams said. I can't believe you can make such delicious bread in a fireplace. I worked hard on perfecting the bread while we were on the trail. My pa and brothers complained at first, because it wasn't as good. But ma and I worked at it, and we figured it out. Was your ma as good of a cook as you are? Mr. Williams asked. She taught me everything I know, Henri said modestly. She knew she'd been a better cook than her ma, but it wasn't by much. Ma had still made a few things better than Henri did. Mr. Williams patted his stomach. I believe I'll take the already butchered meat back to the cabin. Then I'll come and help you some more. He looked at Henri. That was the most delicious meal I've eaten in a long time. Thanks for inviting me. After his pa left, Roy looked at Henri. You couldn't leave well enough alone, could you? I tried. He shook his head. I don't want you making my ma look bad, just because you're a better cook. Not many women could hold a candle to your meals. Would you like me to deliberately burn supper when your family comes? She asked. It would take everything inside her to do it, but she knew she could. He shook his head. No. While I don't want my ma to know how much better you are than her, I also want to show off your wonderful cooking. I know it makes no sense. I just don't want ma's feelings hurt. I'll try not to hurt them, she said. I'm sorry if you feel I said too much to your pa. I don't. I just, I don't even know what to say. I just don't like ma to feel badly. Henri got up and cleared the table then took another loaf of bread from the oven. Is it all right if I take them a couple loaves of bread? For a moment, Roy looked torn, but then he nodded. Just because I'm worried about my ma, doesn't mean they should have to eat her cooking. Emma is going to cook for my family tonight, she said softly. He groaned. She's not going to be able to hide what a terrible cook she is. She's even worse than ma. She tries, but she hasn't been shown how to do anything. Jared told me if she couldn't cook, he was going to make her come to me for cooking lessons. I hope it doesn't come to that, but it sounds like he's marrying her no matter what kind of cook she is. I guess that's good. Roy shook his head. There's no way she's going to measure up to what your family expects from meals. 
There's a backup meal for them if they're unhappy with her cooking. It shouldn't be a big deal. My family knows not to embarrass her over it. They'll eat anything like a bunch of goats. They just won't be happy about it. He chuckled. I like how you compare the men in your family to goats. May I quote you on that? Never. Henri finished up the dishes and started to work, slicing the meat up thinner to make it dry faster. She really would prefer to use a salt brine on it all, but she'd run out of jars. Jerky would have to do. Chapter 9 When they joined Roy's family for supper on Friday night, Henri took a cake and several loaves of bread. Then if she couldn't eat the meal prepared, she could at least make it look like she was eating. Roy carried the cake, while she carried the bread. One loaf was still warm from the fireplace. Roy opened the door without knocking, which felt a little off to Henri, until she realized she did the same with her father's cabin. She hadn't cooked a full meal for her family since she'd made the roast, and Jared told her Emma was cooking for them. She didn't ask, and she really didn't want to know, how well Emma did at cooking supper. They were greeted by his family, but his mother was rigid, as if she didn't want them there. I made a roast, Mrs. Williams said, but she said it in a way that made Henri feel like she'd done something wrong. From the elk? Henri asked. Those have been the best roasts. I just wish I had more jars to preserve the meat. Mrs. Williams gave her a long hard look. I have two dozen more. I'm not going to be preserving the meat with salt this year. You are welcome to them. Are you certain? Henri asked. The idea of being able to do some venison roasts and more elk roasts excited her. Yes, of course. I do better with my jerky. As they all gathered around the table, Henri peeked at the roast and saw it had been done correctly. You could see how moist the roast was. After the prayer, they passed the food in a circle around the table. Everything looks delicious, Mrs. Williams. Mrs. Williams grunted. As soon as Henry's plate was filled, she took a bite of the roast. This is delicious. She was exaggerating a bit. The roast had been cooked alone with absolutely no seasoning, but at least she could bite into it. Mr. Williams nodded. This is the best roast you've ever made. If I use your jars, I'll make sure that I get you some of the roasts, Henri said with a smile. Mrs. Williams still looked annoyed, but she said, I'll trade some jerky for the roasts. That would be wonderful. Henri said enthusiastically. I find your jerky to be some of the best I've ever eaten. Except her own of course, but she wasn't about to say that aloud. That sounds like it's a fair trade, Roy said, worried that things would be tense between him and his family over the way things were cooked, which he found silly. Mr. Williams eyed the cake they'd brought. We are going to have cake, aren't we? For dessert, Henri said. This cake is a bit of an experiment. I baked some dried cherries into the cake, and then I added some water to a few more dried cherries, and I cut them into tiny pieces, which I mixed in with the frosting. I'm not sure how it turned out, so I'll need to hear from everyone what you think of it. You didn't have to bring anything, Henrietta, Mrs. Williams said. You were only asked to come. Mr. Williams frowned. But we're very grateful for the bread and the cake, he said. Aren't we, Ma? Of course, Mrs. Williams looked down at her food. Henri looked over at Emma to ask how she was doing, but Emma's eyes were red-rimmed with tears. She decided to not ask anything that may upset the other girl. She was afraid she already knew what was wrong. It was hard making conversation with as upset as Mrs. Williams and Emma were. Henri finally stopped trying, giving her attention to the burned rice and unseasoned meat on her plate. She could eat the meat with no real trouble, but the rice was very hard to choke down. Now she understood why Roy had said he hated rice. As soon as they were all finished eating, Mr. Williams walked to get the cake off the bed he shared with his wife. They'd brought the empty mattresses from home but had added dried grass when they arrived. The beds were comfortable, 
but they hadn't had to bring full mattresses, which would have weighed down the wagons. Mr. Williams set the cake in the middle of the table. He got a knife and cut it into eight pieces, though there were seven people to eat it. I do believe I'm saving an extra piece for myself. This looks and smells amazing, he said. Everyone was served a piece of the cake, and Henri was nervous as she took her first bite, but she'd always had a knack for combining foods she'd never eaten together. After taking her first bite, she smiled. The cake was delicious. Emma hadn't said a word since Henri and Roy had arrived, but she said, Will you teach me to bake cakes like this? And bread? Of course, I will, Henri said. We'll pick a day, and you can come over and learn to make those two things. Thank you, Emma said, going back to eating her cake, but not looking any happier than she had a while before. Mrs. Williams glared at Henri then, and Henri wanted to apologize, but she didn't know how. What could she say? I'm sorry I can cook, and you can't, or even better, I'm going to teach your whole family to cook, so they can stop eating meals that are half burnt with no seasoning? She decided it was best to keep her mouth shut, and so she did. Roy seemed to understand Henry's discomfort. I've got enough firewood chopped up that I'm going to take tomorrow to hunt again. What other game should I try for? he asked. Henri decided to offer her suggestions once they were home, but Mr. Williams had a couple of things to ask for. I'd love a turkey, he said. Turkey dinners are one of my favorite meals, if they're made with dressing. Especially with sausage and onions. Henri smiled. Do you prefer your dressing to be bread or cornbread? I've never had cornbread. My ma always made a wonderful bread stuffing that I ate more than my share of. If Roy gets a turkey, I'll make both kinds of stuffing for the meals with turkey. What else do you like to have with turkey? Oh, so many things. Mashed potatoes and gravy. Caramelized carrots. Lots of fresh bread. Pies. Um, oh, I almost forgot baked squash, and did I mention pies? Henri smiled. I'll do my best to make those things happen. That would please me. I haven't had a decent turkey dinner since my ma passed away, about five years after we married, wasn't it, ma? Mrs. Williams nodded. That's a lot of cooking for just one person. Well, since Emma has expressed a desire to learn to cook new things, I think I'll have her help me with the cooking. I know I can do apple and cherry pies with dried fruit, which both sound delicious. We'll top them with whipped cream. What can I make for the meal? Mrs. Williams asked. Anything you want to make, Henri said. If it's all right with you, we'll invite my family as well, and have a huge meal for all of us. How often did you help your mother cook? Mr. Williams asked. Every day. I've loved to cook since I was a little girl and my ma taught me to make my first pie. I'm very thankful I knew how to cook after my ma died. Henri bit her lip for a moment. My brothers still wanted their favorite meals, but it was up to me to make them. No wonder you are such a good cook, Mr. Williams said. You've practiced your whole life. Henri nodded. I've never really enjoyed cleaning or sewing, but I love to cook and bake. You can sure tell by how good your pies and bread are. And that roast you served this week was the most wonderful thing I've put in my mouth for years. Thank you, sir, Henri knew the subject needed to change to avoid unnecessary hurt for Roy's mother and sisters, but she wasn't sure how to make Mr. Williams stop. Roy piped up, instead of leaving it all up to Henri. I'll try for more elk, some venison, and turkey then. And then I'll chop some more wood. Do you have enough wood for winter, Pa? Mr. Williams shrugged. I don't think I do but I'll get back to it as soon as I can. That sounds like a good idea, Mrs. Williams said. We're going to need to keep warm and fed all winter, and both require firewood. When I feel like we're set for winter food-wise, I'd love to help you with the wood, Pennsylvania, Roy said. I think we're set wood-wise, but it would be nice if neither of us had to go out for more trees in the middle of winter. 
I agree, Mr. Williams said. Yes, if you have a little time, I'd love the help. If not, I'll just keep chopping. When they left that night, Roy looked over at Henri. My family has already figured out that the way you cook is better than Ma's. And Ma's feelings are hurt. Pa made her put water on the roast, but it still wasn't nearly as good as yours. I'm just not sure if the two of you are ever going to be able to be close. I hope we'll get past this, Henri said, frowning. I feel pretty sure Jared told Emma she needs to take cooking lessons from me. That's probably why she looks so sad all the time. Our families are very different, but I didn't see that at first. We'll find a way to see eye to eye though. Pa sure likes the way you do things better than the way we always have. He shook his head. And we're having my family over tomorrow, right? We are. I really like the idea of cooking a full meal for them. Do you have any idea what they'd prefer? I'm thinking jerky gravy over rice with a side of green beans. Or I could do a pot pie. Or I bet I could get my hands on a couple of pullets and we could have chicken and dumplings? Or is there anything else you can think of? I like the idea of pot pie. But you'll have to make a few. Oh, of course. When Ma and I made them for my family, we'd make one for Ma and me to share, and then one each for the men. He chuckled. Same principle would work with us. One each for my Pa and I, and then one for every two females. That would leave me with an extra half pie for lunch on Sunday. You know what? I'll make two extra pies. They're easy to reheat for the next day. He smiled. Sounds good to me. What meat will you use? She shrugged. What are you going to bring me tomorrow? He sighed. I have no idea. Well, I could do turkey if tomorrow is the day you get a turkey. I could use venison, or elk even. Just get me some meat, and I'll make it work. I think bear meat would even be good in my pot pies. I'll see what I can do. And you'll use some of the elk we already have if I can't get something tomorrow? Sure, I can do that. She sighed. I'm sorry I've hurt your mother's feelings. I never would have done that deliberately. I know. It'll all work out. He wasn't so sure though. Perhaps it had been a mistake not getting to know her better before marrying her. He certainly didn't need a wife who was always upsetting his mother. But he'd been in love with Henri, and no one else. I'm glad everyone liked the cake tonight. I'll do a more traditional cake for tomorrow, she said. That'll work. When they arrived back at their own cabin, he opened the door for her. His little wife was so much more than he'd realized when he was courting her. Would you mind if we did pancakes or Johnny cakes for breakfast in the morning? I'd like to save eggs for the cake. That's fine. I love everything you cook. But there was more to life than cooking all the time. He wasn't sure why she didn't see that. We forgot to get the jars from Ma. Is it okay if I run back for them? Of course, she said. Do you want me to come with you? Roy shook his head. No thanks. You should wash that empty cake plate. Everyone obviously loved it. I will. He left, going back toward his parents' house, and he had no idea what to say to make things better. When he arrived, his parents were arguing, and he'd rarely heard them argue. He waited before he opened the door, listening to make sure the argument wasn't about Henri. I don't understand why you're being so stubborn about this. Pa said. You always told me you wished you were a better cook. We have a new daughter-in-law that can cook just about anything. Why aren't you taking advantage of her knowledge and learning from her? Because she's a child. No one in this family has complained about my cooking. What could she possibly teach me? Ma responded. I'm certainly happy our oldest daughter is more sensible than you are. Maybe I'll send all three girls, and she can teach them to cook. Then we could have some decent meals around here. 
Roy stood at the door with his eyes closed for a moment. They were fighting about Henri. He couldn't understand why, but they were. After a moment, he opened the door, pretending he'd heard nothing. Henri asked me to come back for the jars you said you had. Instead of continuing to fight with her husband, Ma turned away and went into the cellar for jars. His father looked at him across the room. Your mother is a stubborn woman. I'm sorry, Pa. You've done nothing wrong. Emma walked over to Roy, looking embarrassed. Is it all right if Henri teaches me to cook? I was ashamed of how badly supper turned out when I cooked for the apple bice. Of course, it's all right. Henri is the best person to learn from. She can make anything. I didn't know food could taste as good as she makes it. Roy felt bad that she was embarrassed, but he was happy she was willing to learn. There was no reason she couldn't someday cook as well as Henri. Thank you. I may go over in the morning and just spend the day learning from her. I'll let her know to expect you. If you come early enough, she'll show you how to make pancakes. Emma looked confused. I already know how to make pancakes. You know how to make pancakes with eggshells in them that are burnt on at least one side every time. Let Henri teach you to do it without shells or burning. Roy now knew what her bow was used to eating, and he knew Jared would never put up with eating her cooking until she'd improved a great deal. All right. Emma had tears in her eyes again. I wish it wasn't so important to him. It wasn't important to me until I realized there were better ways. He shook his head. I just hate that you and Ma feel so bad about it. It doesn't matter. I'm going to be a better cook if it's the last thing I do. He chuckled. I appreciate the enthusiasm, but there's no need to kill yourself to be a better cook. I guess not. Ma came up the stairs then, carrying another two dozen jars. She gave them all to Roy. Good thing I didn't slip on those stairs, she said. Wouldn't that have made your little Henri happy? Chapter 10 Emma was there before Roy was even awake the following morning. She'd brought their six eggs for the morning with her. When she realized Roy was asleep, she frowned. Am I too early? Henri grinned. When your brother wakes up, you're going to want to step outside for a minute while he dresses, but otherwise you're just fine. I'm always awake before sunup. Watching the sun rise was something Henri had always done with her mother, and doing it now made her feel closer to her ma. That's so early. My ma taught me it was the right way to be. It makes it easier to have food on the table when the menfolk wake up. Emma sighed. Your ma taught you very different things than my ma. She figured the men could wait to eat until she was awake. Henri sighed. My ma thought it was her duty to make her family as comfortable as she could. And she taught me to be the same. I don't want to cause more friction between you and your mother, but I'm so happy to teach you my little tips and tricks of cooking. Serving her family truly was an honor. She might not enjoy doing laundry, but she knew it made their days more pleasant. Let's do it then. Henri quickly demonstrated the right way to crack an egg, something she'd known since she was five. But she felt that she needed to start at the beginning with Emma. Emma focused as she stirred the batter. It's not crunching like it usually does. Is that okay? Crunching? Oh, you were getting shells in the batter. We need to avoid shells, and if you realize you accidentally dump some in the batter, you'll need to fish them out. By the time Roy woke up, the pancakes were finished. They'd made twelve for the three of them. Usually I do bacon with them, but I don't want to waste meat this close to winter. But you'll show me how to make bacon crisp and not burnt? Emma asked. Of course, I will. Roy looked over at his sister and wife working together and smiled. Hey, Emma? You're going to have to go for a quick walk so I can get dressed. I will, Emma said, hurrying out the door. I'm glad you're teaching her to cook, Roy said. 
No one should believe that the way they've been fed their entire lives is the right way when it's the disgusting way. I feel like I've put on a lot of weight since we started courting. It looks good on you, Henri said, smiling over her shoulder. Well, I'm glad you think so. He got out of bed and put on his work clothes. His morning would be filled with hunting, and he knew he'd be chilly. That was fine though if it helped them get ready for the winter. Emma made the pancakes this morning. I explained and demonstrated a few things, but she did the rest. Be gentle with your comments. I will. I'm proud of her for coming to you to learn. I am too. There was a tentative knock on the door. I'm dressed, Roy called, and the door opened. We have a little bit of butter left. I need to get a churn soon, Henri said. Roy sighed. I forgot to make your churn, but I discovered I like to eat butter on everything, so I'll do that this afternoon if I get game this morning. That would be wonderful. Henri looked at Emma. Would you like to learn to churn butter? Emma nodded. Does Jared like butter? On everything he can think to put it on. Maybe we'll all do it together. Your sisters could come as well. My arms are so sore by the end. Then we'll learn it too, and help you. Henri smiled. Now sit down and eat. Try butter and syrup on your pancakes. It's delicious that way. When all three were seated and the prayer had been said, Emma took her first bite of her pancakes, and her entire face lit up. They're actually good. They are. They're as good as mine. Jared loves pancakes, so you're going to be able to make them a lot without trouble. Henri was thrilled Emma had one breakfast down. If she could learn just a couple more, she would be set for a while. Oh, good. Roy bit into the pancakes and grinned at his sister. You did it. We have no food left from last night, so we'll need to make lunch. How would you feel if we made rice with a jerky gravy over it? It's become another staple of what I cook, Henri said. Emma grinned. I'd love to learn to make that. I don't like rice much, but if your brother does, then I need to learn. Roy shook his head. You don't like rice when Ma makes it. I love Henry's rice. It shouldn't be crunchy or burnt, Henri said. Well, that's the only way I've had it. Emma looked at Henri. I want to like it. Trust me, you'll like it my way. As soon as breakfast was over, Roy headed out to hunt, and the women did the dishes together. Is it hard to make rice? Emma asked. Not at all. I'll have you cooking a bunch of things by the end of the day. If you want to stay and learn that is. Henri didn't want to assume that she should take up the other girl's time with cooking lessons. I'll stay if you'll keep teaching. I will. Roy was home an hour later, with a deer. It wasn't nearly as large as the elk had been, but it was enough for the pot pies, and would be enough to save a bit of venison for the winter. I'll let it bleed out while I work on your butter churn. Then after lunch, I'll bring you a chunk for supper. Perfect, Henri said, smiling. Now, we're going to learn to bake bread. In a fireplace? Emma asked, her eyes wide. That's how I make the bread I take to your house every day. Emma squared her shoulders. Teach me. Henri quickly copied the receipt she had for bread and gave the new copy to Emma. That's your receipt. I want you to follow along as we mix this. Henri explained each step before she even started the process. Mixing up ten loaves of bread, as she'd been doing, Henri explained everything as she went. Now, we have to knead it. I don't even know what that means. You will in a minute. The dough was rising while they made their lunch. Each step was explained by Henri in a way that made perfect sense to Emma. That's not how Ma cooks rice. Do you always use water? Always. I think that's what Ma does wrong. She just puts it in the skillet and cooks it over the fire. Henri had no idea what to say to that. 
I've never seen anyone make rice that way. She went on to show Emma the right way to make gravy from jerky while the rice was cooking. Now let's punch down the bread. Emma followed Henri and imitated everything she did. We're going to form it into large balls, and once it's risen again, we'll make it in the skillet. I still prefer bread from an oven, but this is almost as good. Once all the dough was at one end of the table, Henri cleaned the other half so lunch could be served. When Roy came inside, he said, that looks delicious. How much did you help, Emma? Emma smiled. Henri told me what to do with each part of the process, and I followed instructions. After their prayer, Roy took one bite of the mixture and nodded. You learn quickly. Emma practically glowed with a compliment. By the time his family was there for supper, Emma had a small pile of receipts to use so she could cook on her own. When her ma walked in, Emma ran to her. Can I fix Sunday dinner, ma? Mrs. Williams nodded. Of course, you can. As they all sat around the table eating supper, Emma pointed out the things she'd done to help make the meal. I made some of the pie crusts, and I helped cut up the meat to make bite-sized chunks. Henri even taught me to touch meat. And I peeled potatoes, and made rice, and bread. I can cook, ma. Mrs. Williams smiled at her daughter. You've always been a good cook. Henri didn't say anything as Emma excitedly explained everything else she learned that day. When the cake was put onto the table, Emma said, I made that too. And I know how to make a simple frosting now too. There were compliments all through the meal. Mr. Williams lavished praises on his daughter, and Henri could tell he was thrilled she was really learning to cook and not making up what to do along the way. Henri smiled at Mrs. Williams. Did your ma teach you to cook? she asked. My ma died when I was three. I taught myself to cook, as I was the oldest of three daughters at that point. I'm so sorry for your loss, Henri said. Now Mrs. Williams's way of cooking made much more sense to her. Mrs. Williams smiled. I'm sorry for yours as well. I am glad you learned so much from her. I am too. I miss her every day. I can't even do a load of laundry without missing her. As they were leaving, Emma excitedly hugged Henri goodbye. Thank you so much. May I come back Monday and learn more? I'd love that. Can I bring my sisters? Of course. Bring whomever you want. Henri was excited to teach the girls everything she knew about cooking. Can they bring their mother? Mrs. Williams asked. Oh, that would make me so happy. Do you want lessons with your daughters or on your own? Henri asked. We'll all do them together. Sounds good to me. If you're coming early Monday, bring more eggs. Mr. Williams frowned. What am I supposed to eat then? Henri laughed softly. Why don't you come as well? We'll have eggs and bacon and toast. That sounds like the most delicious thing in the world, Mr. Williams said. And my wife will learn to cook. As they left, Henri smiled at Roy. All the dishes were done up, and she was ready for bed. I'm glad that went so well, she told Roy. I am too. I'm glad Ma is willing to have you teach her. None of her children knew the difference but Pa did, and he wanted better. Isn't it strange what will cause problems in a marriage? He'd put up with her cooking for 25 years. She looked at her husband and asked a question that even surprised her. How old are you? How could she not know Roy's age? 23, he said. I thought you were about 21. He shook his head. I can't believe you didn't know that about me. Our relationship happened so quickly. I'm sure there are a great deal of things we don't know about one another. She paused, looking at him. Do you know how old I am? Old enough to be married, he said with a grin. Henri laughed. I'm 18, so yes, I'm old enough to be married. Glad to hear it, he drew her into his arms. Thanks for putting up with my worry about my ma's feelings. 
I'm sure I would have felt the exact same way in your shoes. It's hard when you want to help someone, and you just don't know how. I can understand that. But it all seems to have worked itself out. And I'm shocked that even with guidance, Emma could make a decent meal. She was worse than Ma. Henri shook her head. She's not anymore. When Henri woke the following morning, she was surprised to see that Roy was already out of bed. He was never awake before she was. She sat up and looked around the cabin, but there was still no sign of him. Where would he go this early in the morning? She got up and dressed in her Sunday best, deciding there was no point worrying, and she started breakfast. She humped while she cooked, the same as her mother had always done. It was still hard for Henri to believe she'd gotten married without her mother at her side. The two of them had been so close. And then she was just gone. It was a bit after sunup when she finished breakfast, and shortly after, Roy hurried into the cabin. I got one. I'm happy for you. One what? A turkey. So, when you teach everyone to cook tomorrow, you can teach them to cook turkey and all the things that go with it. Henri grinned. Make sure your pa knows he's coming to supper tomorrow. And I'll invite my family. I hope it's a huge turkey. Roy shrugged. Biggest turkey I've ever seen, but I don't know what you consider big. She peeked out the door and saw he'd already chopped the head off the turkey. Would it be rude if I taught your sisters to pluck the feathers, so I don't have to? Not at all. The next day was busy as they made all their favorites to go with the turkey. Everyone played a part in making the meal, and Henri made sure it was Mrs. Williams who made the bread. By end of the long day, everyone was content and fed. Jared sat beside Emma after the dishes were done, and he said loudly, You have become an amazing cook. Only with the things I know how to cook, she said. Henri has taught me a lot, but it's going to take me a long time to get as good as she is. He grinned at her, and Henri turned to Roy. What did you think of our turkey feast? It was absolutely delicious. He dropped his voice. Are you sure my mom made that bread? Henri laughed, nodding emphatically. Tomorrow, we'll all learn to churn butter. My arms already ache in anticipation. Is the churn to your liking then? He asked. I love it. It's absolutely perfect. Just like my beautiful wife. After everyone had gone for the night, Roy took Henry's hand and led her to sit down on the side of the bed with him. I'm sorry I was difficult about the cooking. So very sorry. You did a good thing, teaching my family to cook, and I'm so happy you're the girl I married. I love you, Henri. She turned and wrapped her arms around him. I love you, Roy. You make me smile every day. My ma approved of you as a husband for me. She knew I had feelings for you from the time we left Missouri. She told me you were the man for me. I wish I'd had a chance to get to know her. I wish you had too. Raising her lips for his kiss, Henri knew that for the rest of their lives, she would live happily ever after with this man in their home. She was where she needed to be, and she couldn't wait to hold babies, though she was enjoying trying to make them as well, much to her surprise. She thought it might be time to start knitting some baby booties, but she was a horrible knitter. Perhaps she could ask her mother-in-law to teach her how. Epilogue By the end of the next summer, Henri was working on her garden almost every day. Harvesting what could be harvested and weeding everything else. It was late September, and she was in the garden harvesting her potatoes, when her pains came. Emma was beside her, helping her with the garden. Are you all right? she asked. The baby's coming. Emma smiled. I'll go get Mrs. Mitchell. And Ma. Thank you. Henri said. She walked into the house and started boiling water, removing the sheets from the bed and covering it in oil cloth. It wasn't the most comfortable thing in the world, but it would work. Roy slammed the door open minutes later. She looked at him, I guess you heard? 
you didn't send someone for me? Of course, I'm going to be here for the birth of our child. No, you won't. You don't need to be part of this. Go and work with the cattle. Your ma, Mrs. Mitchell, and I will do just fine on our own. But. Go. Asterisk. It was almost twenty hours later when he was invited into the house to see his wife sitting up in bed, holding a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. He walked to her and carefully sat on the bed, not wanting to hurt her. Well? He asked. She smiled. It's a little girl. I want to give her my ma's first name, and then your ma's first name for a middle name. Is that all right? Absolutely. Roy thought for a moment. So, she will be Nellie Norma Williams. Does that sound right to you? He asked. It's perfect. She smiled up at him, and her face simply shone. We made a beautiful baby. We did. He still hadn't had a chance to see the baby, but he knew it would be beautiful. Good work, Mama. Good work, Papa, she said. I love you, Roy. I love you more than I ever imagined I could love anyone, 